Hey guys and welcome to a new Panda Film tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make this really nice cardboard um, shape in Photoshop. Now I looked online and I can't really find many cardboard box tutorials. They all seem to be like glossy or wooden boxes or product boxes. Now I'm thinking how did a wooden box come into a result where you search cardboard box? Uh, they're completely different things. For this tutorial you're going to need Photoshop obviously and you're going to need to know what a cardboard box looks like. If you don't I suggest you go out and find one now before continuing with this. Or Google. Google's a wonderful thing for finding out new things. So in this tutorial, we're, in, in this tutorial sorry, we're going to be using um, layer masks, the pen tool, transform and distort tools and I'm going to be showing you a way to organize your projects better. So first of all, let's go and create a new um, project. 500 by 500, I think we'll do. I'm going to name this Boxiness, Boziness, Boxiness. 72 pixels per inch, 8 bit, yep. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the white background layer, because I don't like white backgrounds. So we're going to make a new group. This is how I organize. I'm going to name this one Box. Make another new group inside of that and name this one Side. Z. Sides. There we go. So we're going to make a new layer. We're going to name this one Outside Left. Can you guess what side of the box that's going to be on? Possibly the outside left? I don't know. So the first thing we're going to do is click on the pen tool. Make sure you have this to, um, button selected, Shape Layers, and you have the Pen Tool selected. You can use Paths, but they are somewhat um, tedious when you've got to right click and fill Path every single time you make a new one. So I've got my grid up here. You can go View, Show, Grid, or you can hit Control and the apostrophe, or in the UK keyboards, the At key because for some reason the US have it on the number two key. So with our outside left selected, we're gonna just pick here, go across three and in the top left, go down four, in, and then back up. So that's one side done. Now for some reason it's making effects on my layers. Okay, let's make another new layer. Um, I'm going to name this one outside right. I'll give a cookie to whoever guesses what that one's going to be, which is a different color. Across three, top left, down four. Yeah, that was four. Across three again, and up. Again, with the effects layers. Come on, seriously. Make another new layer. I'm going to bring that one down. And I'm going to name this one inside left. No, really, I will give a cookie to whoever gets this one. So we're going to just change the colors, even darker, let's say. And we're going to pick at this, go across, down, and back over. And then down again. Whoops, so why do I keep doing that? Inside right. I'm not even going to bother with this joke. Um, yeah. Whoops. Forgot to pick my color. Let's go even darker. And then just go across, down, up. And there we go. We have the box shape sort of there. Well, it is a box. So I'm trying to get it as if the light's coming from this direction here, um, this way. So we're going to have this side the brightest of them all. Let's, whoops. Let's just make this slightly darker. I'm going to pick that one slightly, slightly darker like so. And then this one is going to be darker than that one because it's more of a shadow. So there we go. Now you may notice here there's a very fine line around the top and the bottom of the box where they join where you can see through into the background. So we're going to 
select both the top and click on the move tool and just nudge it down to one pixel. So that was fairly simple. And now we're going to find a texture. I'm going to go into Google and I found this image in the Google images. I typed in cardboard texture and this was like in the second row. So I'm going to hit copy image, bring it down and paste into the project. I'm going to move that um, above the layer I want it on. And I'm going to hit Control T, right click, distort. Now you can also find this in edit, transform and distort. And then I'm going to bring up my guide again. And just going to pretty much do the same as what we did just with the texture now. It's like so. And now we can just duplicate this by hitting Control J. But first, I'm going to I'm going to name this outside left texture, and this one outside right texture. Now I'm going to go to Edit, Transform, and Flip horizontally. So I can just drag that into place there. So with that done, we can pretty much duplicate that again and we can name it um, inside left texture hit the move tool and just push it back so now you're probably thinking it's overlapping everything else how am I going to fix that well you can hold control down and click on the path for the side that is overlapping just hit delete done it's that simple so we're going to do the same as we did for the outside duplicate that edit transform whoops transform and flip horizontally and then just drag it over so it fits nicely there so there we go you're probably wondering wow it's lost all of its depth now well not to worry we're just going to go and hit overlay on them all. Overlay, 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 overlay. Now, one thing you can do with this is you could actually make a group layer and name it texture. I'm going to leave them all on overlay, 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 go to the texture and bring down the opacity somewhat. So there we go, we've got the textures in their own folder, we've got the shape layers in their own folder as well, inside of another folder. This keeps it really well organized. Now you're probably wondering, there isn't much um, of a shadow inside this box when it comes to um, the light shining through and there's been much depth. Well, there's a really easy way you can fix that. We're going to make a new layer in the sides, I'm going to name this... Um, inside shadow. Grab our brush tool and grab a brush 150 pixels or so and 0% hardness. Now we're just gonna click, a, oops, make it um, a really dark grey if you can. There we go, 3C. And then just gonna click a couple times there. And this is where the layer mask is going to come in handy. Because we don't want that over there on, on the outside of the box. It ruins the illusion. So whilst clicking on the inside shadow layer here, I'm going to click on this. Create layer mask. It's a square with a white circle in the middle. And now we're going to click on the um, texture, um, layer mask, sorry, which is the white square here. Click the pen tool, bring up the grid. And we're just going to make sure it's on path this time. And we're just going to go around the outline of the outside of the box like so. Right click, make selection, zero um, feather radius. And then on the mask, it's either white or black. White lets things pass through. Black doesn't. So we're going to hit... Whoa. Oops. There we go. So 
So now you can see here that I've painted pretty much a black outside of the box. And what it's done is it's hidden the um, bottom of the brush that we've just made. So I'm going to go overlay and bring the opacity down just a tad like so. So you can see, it looks like we have more depth inside the box now because it has more of a shadow in there. So that was fairly simple, wasn't it? Just to make that box, there was no trouble at all with that. So now we're going to make the flaps that come off the side. Let's so make a new group. You could have guessed that one coming. I'm going to name this Flaps. And then we're going to grab our pen tool again, make sure it's back on the uh, shape layer. Bring up the grid. And then we're just going to make something like this all the way around. Whoops. Like so. So now we're going to have to find our brown colour again, which is alright because I'm just going to pick around for a colour that I like. There we go. Then we're going to name this flap right. Make a new layer. Bring up this pen tool. I'm just going to pick that and make it slightly brighter. I'm going to do the same for this side, like so. Flap left. Another new layer, we're going to name this Flap B left for back. And then just going to go along here, like so. And then, it's, rather than doing anything, I'm just going to flap B right. So I didn't actually work, sorry. I am really tired today. Flap B right on a new layer. Grab the pen tool. And make another flap. Like so. Now you probably noticed we got that line issue again. We're just going to keep nudging it in until it fits like so. And now you can do some shading if you want. Um, I don't really like shading the flaps because yeah I never quite know how to shade them properly. Which is kind of one of my downfalls. And then that one, make it dark since it's at the back of the box. Let's just make this one darker. Yeah, I think that looks fine. So now we have our flaps. We can pull up the flaps layer uh, group. Go back into Chrome and then copy the texture again. Paste the texture and then resize it so it's slightly smaller. Making sure it will cover the flaps when you want to. I'm going to name this Flaps Texture and bring it down into here, bring it above there, and then Control T, Distort, bring up the grid, and then we're just going to distort it so it fits well with the flap, like so. There we go. Now let's just duplicate that. Edit, transform, flip horizontal. Okay. Control V again so we have a new texture to work with. I'm going to name this Flaps B. So I'm going to Control T. Uh, make it smaller again and distort. Okay. Uh, and there's one thing you've got to bear in mind is because we have nudged the B flaps back towards the box, it's somewhat harder to get the textures to fit properly. 
as you can see there. So distort. There we go. That should work fine. Actual pixels again. Uh, let's duplicate this and see if it works. Edit, transform, flip horizontal. Whoops. Then just drag it over here. And then line it up. Distort. Oh, to be honest, I think it was working fine where it was. Okay, let's go back to the actual pixels. I'm just going to hide my swatches. Make a new group. The name is texture. And then just going to copy all of these. Pull them into here. Overlay, bring the opacity down, like so. So that's our box. It's done after 16 minutes of a tutorial. We have done the box. Now, you can put stuff in there by using a layer mask again. Um, really easy. For example, I'm just going to grab my uh, sparkles brush. Here, put it a light blue. Make a new layer. I'm just going to make some sparkles there. Uh, add a glow. Make it that blue. Go on to normal. Give it a nice spread. Inner glow. Color burn. No, wait. Linear dodge or color dodge, even. There we go. Hit OK. And then name this sparkles. And then create a layer mask. Bring up your grid, open up the pen, go on to pass again. And just do the same as we did for the inside shadow. Just go around the box, up, make selection. OK and then hide it by painting it black again. It's that simple to do, really. Just gonna nudge that down, make a gradient for the background. Let's go for Mighty Slate. Bring that down. I'm gonna copy that color actually. Oops. Go into here, make it lighter, oops, full opacity, reverse, radial, make that brighter again, and there you have it. It's not the same, because I spent more time on that one. But that is how you make a 3D box inside of Photoshop. Now I will provide the PSD for this since there was no fonts used, you'll open it fine in your Photoshop. Um, I'm not sure if it'll work in older versions since I've got CS 5.5, but I'm not too sure if it'll open it. It will. I'm fairly sure it will. So I'll save this, upload it, and put it in the description below. Thanks for watching this tutorial, and I hope to see you in the next one. So thanks for watching again, subscribe, thumbs up and comment, let me know I'm doing a good job and teaching you something new. If, if I'm not teaching you something new, just say it anyway, it makes me feel better. So thanks for watching, goodbye.